Have you ever wondered why giraffes are so tall? Now, all of us in the room, that's one exception, you know, like DNA and evolution and things like that, but there is, in fact, a far, far older story, an account of why giraffes are so tall. And it goes back a very, very long way, almost to the time before time, when giraffe and rhino were both about this tall. And they lived in a place where it was fiercely dry. I mean, so dry you can hardly imagine. Yellow grass, not the color of the plates we've had dinner on, supper our snacks, no nutrients at all. And of course, being this tall, they couldn't reach the trees or the branches or anything. They were desperately hungry. And they heard a rumor that if they took a walk across the plain and down the side of a very steep valley, and across the bottom of the valley, they'd come to a forest where they'd find a witch doctor. Now, we're going to introduce a couple of Swahili terms here because that's relevant to what the story is about. The witch doctor, or faith healer, or traditional healer is called Muganga. The giraffe is Twiga, the rhino is Fara. So Twiga and Fara set off across the plain and they came to the edge of the valley, and it's so steep they couldn't go straight down. They had to zigzag like we do, we climb steep mountains and screws. And they got to the bottom, they walked across the bottom of the valley, and they came to this forest that they'd heard about. And they were wondering what was going on, and they suddenly heard a voice. Ooh, you, what can I do for you? And they looked up. Oh, there's an owl. So they explained the predicament about this terrible hunger, and the owl said, oh, no problem. Just go down there, you'll find the Muganga's house, and he'll fix you. You'll have no problem. So they set off down the side of the forest, and lo and behold, pretty soon they came to this hut, and there was the Muganga outside the hut, and he started to talk to him, and they told him the problem, what are we going to do? And he said, oh, oh, that's easy. I'll sort that out for you, you'll be able to reach the trees easily. But it's going to take you all night to make up your medicine, your dial. So, you'll have to come back in the morning, when the sun has just started to rise, but before it reaches the tops of the trees, because then the dial is finished, it won't work. So they toddled off into the forest and left the Muganda on his own and went looking for something to eat and it got pretty late, so they got it off and had a snooze. Now Twig is the bright one. Twig will work up right away. Fire is a bit low IQ, shall we say? Slow on the uptake. So Twig will work up first thing in the morning and there was the sun just tickling the bottom of the trees. You could see it through the trees up right side of the valley. And he woke up, oh, shook himself, and toddled off to the Muganga's house, where he knew precisely where it was. And there was the Muganga with two big, goods, calabashes of dawa. And the Muganga handed one to Twigger and said, Here, drink this down. So Twigger went, and drank it all down. And of course, we all know what happened. The legs started to get pneumonia. They waited for fire, there was no fun in fire, they hadn't shown up, couldn't figure out where he was. And suddenly, the sun had risen some more, it was near the top of the trees, and the Muganga got very upset and said, Look, your friend Fire hasn't shown up, I spent all this time making this special garden for you, why didn't you drink it? There was still no sign of fire, he looked around, couldn't see it. So Twigger took the other calabash and went, and drank it down. And of course, we know what happened next. His neck started to get. And so now we know why giraffes down 16 or 17 feet tall. And here they are, to this day, in Meru National Park, where I have other accounts of real situations that I faced. 